Okay, this is the uh, video tutorial for lesson 9, 8.3. And we're going to build on the power to the power rule. We did it last lesson. But we're now going to combine it into more complicated questions. So let's first of all start by using multiplication. So the rule that we discovered last lesson, power to a power, essentially you're looking for the parentheses. You're looking for an exponent inside and an exponent outside. And we basically, when that happens, you just multiply the two things together. So three times two would give you six. Now, this is, would have been just a separate question last time. So you'd have done two times five, which is 10. And then the added component to link all the exponents units together is, remember when you multiply, you add the exponents together if they have the same base, which they do here. So six and 10 would give us 16. So that's the type of question that we're going to be looking at. Now, the questions can increase in difficulty quite, kind of quickly. So as we're looking at this first term, I can see that all it is, it's just says A, B, cubed, that's it. Now for this second term here though, I can see that there's a parenthesis on the outside. So each of the terms on the inside, I have to do to the power of four. So a to the power of four and b to the power of four. Now when I'm multiplying, I can add exponents together. Remember if there is no exponent, you can always put a one here. So one add four, that would give me a to the power of five and three add four for the b's, would give me b to the power of seven. And you can see that that's a good answer. So let's move on to the next one. So this is very similar to the one that we saw on that first example. Uh, three times two would give me six and four times five would give me 20. And then as I'm multiplying these together, I can just add the exponents together. So six and 20 would give me 26. And then we've got a few we can practice here. This one's been broken down into several components. I'm really interested just in the last part, to be honest. So x to the four to the negative two, that's x to the negative eight. And x cubed to the power of five is three times five, which is 15. Now, as I'm multiplying, I can just go ahead and add the exponents here together straight away. So negative eight add 15 would give me seven. Now, some of you might be saying, hold on, I thought if it was a negative exponent, you're supposed to bring it to the bottom and change the sign. Well, you can definitely do that. There's nothing wrong with doing that. And when you divide, remember you subtract exponents. So 15 take away eight would also give you seven. So just a slightly different way of thinking about the question. I guess it depends on how you see the question. And there we go. You can see that that's a good work one. So. Power to the power, it says we cannot use the add rule because the power bases do not have the same bases. So just be careful if you have different terms like p to the six and q to the 10, that you don't put something like p q to the power of 16. Don't add these together because they don't have the same bases. So we always have to watch out for things like that too. So now we've got a few more letters in here. So for this first term, I got a square each term. So I'm gonna do eight squared. I'm gonna do a cubed squared and I'm going to do b squared. Notice I'm putting parentheses around each term as well. That will help avoid any possible mistakes on more complicated questions. So eight squared, you can just use your calculator for that one. Just use Desmos, eight times eight is 64. For this one, we just multiply the powers together. So this is a power to the power rule. And then there's only one exponent on this last one. So this will just be b squared. Technically, remember there's a one here. So you could always do one times two, but that would still be two anyway. And for my other term, notice that there is no exponent on the outside. So I'm just multiplying by one quarter, a to the five, and then b. And I'm gonna go ahead and put b to the one just to remind myself of that. So when we're multiplying here, we're looking for like terms. So 64 times one quarter. If you're not sure, just go ahead and use your Desmos calculator, 16. For the a's, a to the six, a to the five, as I'm multiplying, I would add exponents. So that would be a to the 11 and two add one would give me three. So 16, a to the 11, b to the three, we'll check our answer and they're looking good. Uh, this time more complicated because both of these expressions both have exponents on the outside. So I'm gonna have to do the power to the power rule twice here. So I'm gonna do six to the power of two. I'm gonna do m to the power of two and I'm gonna do n to the power of negative three, also to the power of two. Now I'm kind of running out of room here, so I'm just gonna work out this first part and then I'll do the second part in a second. So six squared, 
six times six is 36. Only one exponent here, so that's just m squared. And negative three times two is negative six. And that's supposed to be an n, looks a little bit like an h. And we could bring that to the bottom, but I'm just gonna leave that for right now. And then the second term, each of the terms this time are gonna be cubed. So I got two cubed. I have n to the negative two cubed. And I have, oh, sorry, that's an m actually, oops. And then the last one is n to the four. And that's also gonna be cubed. So two cubed, use your calculator if you're not sure, eight. Negative two times three is negative six. And four times three is 12. And I gotta remember this is not an n, it's actually an M, there we go. And then I've got to multiply these two answers together. So 36 times eight, this is probably where we have to dig our, our calculator. Um, I'm gonna hope, and I don't have my calculator with me, I'm hoping it's 288, but you should definitely check. I guess we'll find out in a second, won't we? Uh, for the M's, we add the exponents. So two add negative six, uh, gives me negative four. And negative six add 12, gives me positive six. So as I come to type in my answer, I know I got a negative exponent here, which I'm gonna to wanna to put on the bottom of the fraction. So I click divide straight away so I can type these in. So 288 n to the power of six, and then that m to the power of negative four, I'm gonna bring it to the bottom and I'm gonna make it a positive exponent. And let's see what it says. There we go, so good. Now, I guess I can work that out in my head. I was a little bit worried. I hadn't looked at this ahead of time to check. All right, division using power to a power. So we actually looked at one question using division earlier. This is where we subtract the exponents. But for fraction questions in general, you wanna work out the top, you wanna to work out the bottom, and then you wanna divide. So for the top here, this is just power to a power. So five times two is 10. Four times negative two is negative eight. And then when we divide, we subtract the exponents. So 10 take away negative eight, Please use your calculator to avoid careless mistakes. That should be 18. Let's keep going. Ooh, this one's a lot longer. So I got multiple terms and they're both to the power of three. So I've got to do a to the negative two to the negative three. So I'm gonna multiply those together. So negative two times negative three is six. Four times negative three is negative 12. I'm not gonna move that to the bottom quite yet. I'm just gonna leave it for the moment. Then I'm gonna work these ones out. So five times negative one is negative five. Uh, two times negative one is negative two. So a lot of this we can just use our calculator for if we're not sure. And then C to the negative one goes right on the end. Now notice before we start moving terms around, we can actually simplify here. So when we divide and we subtract, so six take away negative five is gonna be 11. Negative 12 take away two is gonna be negative 10. So now as I finish with a negative exponent, I am gonna move that to the bottom at this point here. And then C to the negative one, uh, there is no other C term, but we're not allowed to leave negatives in our answer. So change the position and change the sign. I'm not gonna put the power of one here, but certainly negative one when you make it positive is C to the power of one, which is just gonna be C. So, whoops. Where do we do this? All right, down here. So a to the power of 11 divided by b to the power of 10. Whoops, I missed my c off as well here, didn't I? All right, there we go. And doesn't seem to like that answer for some reason, but that's definitely the correct answer. So we'll go on to the next slide. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, this time, um, power to have power, but done in a different way. Um, oh, okay, I see what they did. I thought this was an equation for a second when I saw the equal sign. So if we go back just for a second, when we had this negative exponent here and here, we could at the start, if we want to, just switch this whole question around. So a negative exponent, bring it to the bottom and make it positive. And then the negative exponent, switch it to the top and make it positive. And then you can get rid of some of your negative exponents that way and then work through. I think as you're using your calculator anyway, and you're still gonna have to deal with some negatives inside the parentheses. I personally prefer this first way, but just be aware there is a different way you can do some of these questions. 
All right, question eight. Oh, my eyes are lighting up straight away. Anything to the power of zero. That was our very first lesson. We know that that's just going to be one. And on the bottom here, no power to a power. So we can just go ahead and write down everything that we see. So six, x to the four, uh, y to the negative three. I can't leave that in my answer. So I know I need to move that to the top. So I'm just gonna put it like that. I'm not gonna put one y cubed because that's kind of pointless. I'm just gonna put y cubed. So I'm gonna go for my simplest answer. So y cubed over six x to the power of four. And I think the reason it won't let me check my answer is because I'm not typing in all the other answers as I'm going along here. So I'm being a little bit lazy. All right, expanding quotient rules. So when we have a quotient as in a fraction that's in parentheses raised to a power, then we kind of just have to make sure each of the terms is raised to this power. So the top term to this power, and then the bottom term to this power. So five thirds, if it's to the power of four, you would do five to the power of four divided by three to the power of four. And you could work out what five to the power of four is. 625 over 81, if necessary. If you have it with letters, same idea. If you have multiple terms on top, then make sure you apply both of these terms to this exponent. So two to the five, h to the five, c to the four to the five, and so on as you're actually simplifying. And you can work out that two to the five is 32 as well. So we're just getting a little bit more complicated. So this one is cubed. So I've got to do every term cubed. So I actually would always keep parentheses here as well. I noticed in that example there they didn't. But... So on the top, I've got to do both terms cubed. And then on the bottom, I've got to do this term cubed as well. So b to the negative two, Cubed. Two cubed, eight, four times three, 12. And on the bottom here, negative two times three is negative six. So I really just wanna bring this straight up to the top like this. And I'm just gonna put B to the power of positive six. Next one to the negative two. So I gotta do three to the negative two. So it might take a little while just to write these down, but you know you're gonna to get to the right answer, which is kind of important. And y to the negative four, also to the power of negative two. So I'm just splitting it up into its component parts. And then on the bottom, I'm gonna do the same. Two, two to the power of negative two, um, x to the negative three, Oops, the power of negative two and y to the power of negative two. Oops, that did not go very neat at all. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, as we're working through these, there are different ways of doing questions as we've talked about. And what I did there is absolutely correct. There's nothing wrong with doing this. I made sure each term applied to the negative two, just like it said on this example. For this particular question though, notice there's like terms here before I even start. So sometimes it's easier just to simplify inside first. So I could actually just say, well, three over two doesn't simplify. So I'm gonna leave that as it is. Um, x and x to the one divided by x to the negative three, one take away negative three is four. And y to the negative three take away, uh, sorry, y to the negative four, and then this is y to the one. So negative four take away one is negative five. And I know that negative five means that I would bring it to the bottom of the fraction. So you could actually choose to simplify before you start. And the advantage of that is you have less terms to write out now. Because notice I got multiple terms here that have x's and multiple terms that have y. So three to the power of negative two. You'd actually be advised to probably just type in three halves to the power of negative two on your calculator and change it to a fraction. Um, and what you'd actually find out is it's four nines. So this would become three to the negative two, which would turn out to be, well, you use your calculator for that as well. It would turn out to be one ninth. Uh, you'd work out two to the power of negative two, which would turn out to be one quarter. And this fraction to a fra fraction divided by a fraction thing doesn't look very nice. Four times negative two is negative eight. And five times negative two is negative 10. So this one ninth divided by one quarter that you just use your calculator for, that will turn out to be four ninths. And then this negative, I got to bring this to the bottom and change the exponent. 
And same for the one on the bottom. I got to move it to the top and change the exponents. So sometimes there's different ways you could think in. I could have continued this way and I would definitely got the right answer. Um, but yeah, for definitely for fractions, I would type this straight into Desmos, three over two to the power of negative two, and it will actually give you four nines. And for multiple choice questions, sometimes that's all you actually need to get the right answer. All right, let's see what we've got here. So with fractions, remember, we're going to work out the top and then work out the bottom. So the top part is just multiplication, which means I add exponents. So 22 add negative six is 16. On the bottom, I've got power to a power, so I'm going to multiply these together. So three times negative four is negative 12. And then for division, you subtract exponents. So 16 take away negative 12 would be 28. And I think for this one, I can just type in each answer as I go along. Yeah, it'll let me check one at a time. Um, oh, that's for the final answer though. Whoops. So what do we say that was? N to the power of 16. There we go. This one we said was n to the power of negative 12. That's good. And then I'm not doing that last step. And then the last one is n to the power of 28. And it might not let me check my answer as I don't want to type in that third step. Yeah, I don't want to type in that third step particularly. All right, next one. So once again, multiplying. So I'm going to add exponents. So 17 add negative 8 is 9. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. And then when I subtract the answers, 9 take away negative 12 is 21. And we'll just leave that without typing in the rest of them. Now, there are some bonus questions we can practice, similar to like we looked at before, where the style is just a little bit different. So on a question like this, um, I know I've got to multiply these together. So that would give me 8p. 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. And then I know that I divide, I subtract exponents. So I would have 8p take away negative 16, which is actually the same as 8p plus 16. And that equals 48, because I'm matching up the exponents. And then you could solve to see actually which one of those is the correct one. I believe 8 times 4 would give me 32. And then 32 take away negative 16 would be 48. There we go. Uh, what do we got here? P times 10, so 10P. 5 times 4 is 20. So when I divide, I subtract. So 10P take away 20 is 30. And I believe that one is 5. 5 times 10 is 50. Take away 20 does indeed give me 30. There we go. Looking good on that one. I'm sure if there's any lower down. Oh, there was my little sketch pad. That was the part that I missed. All right, go practice the questions from assignment 10.3. And uh, that's the, actually not just the end of this lesson. That's actually the end of this whole unit.